What's up guys, welcome to a new tutorial series in Game Maker Studio and for this series we'll be creating a very simple top-down action RPG. And this series, or at least this part of the series, is directed specifically to beginners and I'm going to go through it very, very slowly so that everybody can keep up. And in this video we'll just be creating our first sprites and movement. But before we actually get into all the programming and creating the sprites, we should take a look at some of the essential buttons that you'll need to know before we get started. So the first button is up here, which is the first three buttons. We have create a new game. We have open a new game. We don't really need to know those for now, but we do need to know that there is a save button. And make sure that you save your project often. We also have the play button, which is this green arrow. The green arrow is basically testing out the code as it is, nothing, nothing particularly special. The red one is to run the game in debug mode. As a beginner, you don't really need to know that, at least for now. Um, just know that that does exist. The next buttons that we will need for this entire series would be the create a sprite button, the create a background button, create a script button, create an object, and create a room. Now for this part of the video, we will only be creating a sprite, an object, and a room, and that's it. So let's get right into it because we have a fair bit to do. So let's create our very first sprite. We're going to call it, I'm going to call it, view sprite. A lot of people tend to write SPR sprite, and that is pretty much that's come out of Game Maker's um, old tutorials. I've been using Game Maker since Game Maker 5, I think it was. Um, and then I upgraded to 8, and now I'm here in the studio. So, you know, if that gives you any indication of how long I've been using Game Maker, that's um, what I do. Um, but I just call it View. What's important is that the names of the sprites and the names of the objects are different. That's all you really need to be concerned with right now. So, you know, anything that has some sort of prefix or suffix at the end, I don't know, it's up to you. So I should call it view player, not sprite, because that's pretty generic. Now we click on uh, we click on edit sprite and we can create a new sprite pressing this sort of white piece of paper icon. And we'll just leave it at 32 by 32 settings. Double click the image that it generates. Make sure you select the Fill tool and right-click. The colors of the right and left are determined by what's in these boxes. So say we want to create a red character instead. Yeah, bright red. There we go. We've right-clicked because it's in the right section. When we right-click there, it comes up red. If we left-click, it's black, but we'll make it red. Cool, awesome. Don't touch the origin section. If we press center on that, it basically comes up as that, but we don't we don't want that to be up there, we want it to be in the top corner because um, some of the collision stuff that we'll be doing is pretty reliant on the um, on the uh, origin, so we want to just make sure that it's in the top corner, which is 0, 0. We're going to create another sprite, which is the basically the wall sprites that we'll be using. So we'll call it view, uh, we'll call it view collider, not wall, because we won't just be using it for walls, we'll be using it for other things as well. So again, we'll just create a new sprite, leave the settings as they are, but this time we'll fill it with black, just so that there's a difference. Awesome. The next thing that we're going to do is go straight into creating an object. So this green ball button will create an object, and I'm going to call the object the player. If I named it view underscore player and attempt to click OK, this error will come up. A resource with this name already exists. So by naming it, um, by naming your sprites view underscore player or view underscore collider or whatever you want to call it, you're ensuring that there is a difference um, when it comes to create objects. I'm not entirely sure why Game Maker does that. Um, it's the first time that I've actually come across that. Now that I'm using other engines, some of the things here in Game Maker are kind of, I won't say useless, but a bit strange and counterintuitive. But there's nothing we can do about that. So we've created our player object, we'll click OK, 
um, and we haven't actually assigned a sprite. So in this section we can assign sprites and we obviously want to assign the player sprite because this is the player object. We'll create another one and we'll call it um, Collider and I've already assigned the sprite but we're going to call it Collider. And finally we're going to create a room and in this room we are going to call it test room. When it comes to creating projects I always like to create a test room just so that I can test out um, all the gameplay mechanics and things like that within a small space because if we're if we go ahead and start building all the elements of the game like you know the environments and all that and it turns out the code doesn't work then you've wasted your time building an entire I don't know, level or an entire game, and you find out that the game doesn't actually work. So build a test room, you know, just leave the default settings as is, and it's fine. You'll be able to work with that. So here's our, I guess, our little room, our game that we've got going. I'll just add in some extra stuff. You know, this won't be pretty, this will be useless. The colliders will be useless at this stage because we're just going to focus on movement. If we run the game, however, we do not have, we will find that we will not have any input because we haven't actually programmed anything. So I'm pressing the arrow keys, I'm pressing the WASD keys, nothing is happening. We haven't had the time to write code. But we're going to do that now. So here in the player object, we're going to click add event and we're going to use the create event. And basically, the create event gets run once at the start of the game or when the instance is first created so that's just to give you a heads up in the side here we're gonna go to the control tab so by default you're in move you wanna go to control and you know you're in control you're in the control tab because of this green line that's pretty much highlighted and in the code section we're gonna drag and drop this icon this is the only drag and drop item that we'll be using and it's in the create event and it's called execute a piece of code. I want to show you guys that to make it easier, especially if you're working on a team or if you step away from your project for a while, to make it easier to know what a piece of code does, put in three dashes like that and then initialize variables. And basically what it does is gives it a title. So initialize variables. And um, so the variables that we'll need are x speed, and we're going to set that to zero. Now, before we actually go on, there are two things that are similar to x speed. There's x, which is your actual position, and then there's speed, which is an inbuilt variable. You don't want to use the speed variable because that is actually got to do with the physics, I believe. Um, and we don't want to do that, we want to do things the sort of, um, I guess, retro way. Um, we also need a Y speed, so it's the exact same. And we need a move speed. This will become clear at the end, just for now, just follow along. The move speed is basically what we're going to use to actually move our character around and the x and y speed are variables that will be changing when we press certain keys. So for now just leave it at 2. I'm going to leave it at 2, you can put whatever number you want there. We're going to add a new event, another event, and it's going to be a regular step event. And again we're going to add in code, but this time we're going to get inputs. Input. Done. And it changes the name of it, so now we know exactly what goes on get input. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a variable called left. And for that, we are going to assign bracket bracket. No, we don't need that one. We need check. Is it check? No, it's keyboard check. Keyboard check basically looks for um, whether or not you've pressed a key. So up, down, left, right, uh, a, W, A, S, D, whatever keys you want. And it comes back as either true or false. Um, and keyboard check VK and we'll go left. Basically it's checking every frame. The game checks to see whether or not you're pressing the left key. 
If you are, that will come up as true. If you're not, it will come up as false. Remember that you have to use keyboard left, um, sorry, keyboard check and not check underscore pressed or released. Otherwise, it will check if you've tapped it and it won't continuously check. The next one we'll do is write keyboard check bk write. And then we'll do the same thing for up and down. Up ah, equals keyboard check bk up. And we'll also do one for down because obviously this is a top down RPG. We want to make sure that it sort of makes sense to have up and down. Unless, of course, your game does not have up and down motions, so it might be a platform or something like that, then that's fine. That's alright. Alright, we've pretty much got input, but we won't move, we won't be able to move yet. I'm going to open up the ins, uh, the initialized variables that we create because we're about to affect the x and y speed. <clears throat> alright, we'll start with the x speed because that makes sense. So x speed equals Hmm, we're gonna put in this special function, sign, um, right minus left, multiplied by move speed. All right, I'm gonna take my time to really explain this properly. Sign basically forces the values that's inside the brackets to equal one. And essentially, if we didn't have that, actually, I'll show you what happens if we don't have sign. First, we'll start off like that, and then we'll go y speed as well. Equals, um, what is it? What would it equal? It equals uh, down minus up multiplied by move speed. And then we also need to affect x plus uh, x speed, obviously and y plus equals y speed. All right, before we before I start explaining what that sign function was, let's ex let's take a look at what I just wrote here. Um, so our x speed is right minus left. That's because if we this actually equals 1 in secret. Whenever uh, a value, a bool value in game maker is um, true, it will equal 1. If it's false, it will equal zero. So if we go right, which is positive on our x-axis, minus left, so basically minus one, we will get zero. Um, that's because we're holding down left and right at the same time. Uh, but if we're just pressing left, then we get negative one. And if we're pressing right, we get positive one. The same thing applies to up and down. Um, and we're multiplying whatever value comes out of this uh, comes out of the brackets by the move speed. So if we were going say right, and we weren't pressing left at the same time, so one times two equals two, and so x plus equals basically takes the current x value and moves it across two pixels. So let's try out the code as it is. So, just wait for it to compile. Okay, I'm pressing left, so I'm going left. I'm going left at two pixels at a time. You won't be able to see it because two pixels is a pretty small value, but um, it's noticeable. If I go right, I go right two pixels at a time. Same thing with up and down. Right, now, here's where that sign value, sort of that sign function, sorry, comes into effect. If I go left and right, up and down, you can see that the speed is pretty consistent, would you agree? I hope you do because I can't exactly answer your questions. But if we go diagonal, you can sort of see that we're going somewhat faster than we would if we were just going straight up, down, left, and right. If you're making a, a game that doesn't restrict you to grid movement, the way to fix that is to actually add in the sign function. The sign function basically forces the numbers to come back to come out as exactly 1, 0, or negative 1. So it'll equal positive 1 if we're going right, and it will, it will equal 
negative 1 if we're going left, and 0 if we're pressing no keys, or if we're pressing right and left at the same time. Now that we've added in the sign functions, we're going to save our project because we don't want to lose our progress. We're going to play the game, and we're going to go up, down, left, right, so nothing's changed. Now we're going to move diagonally, and there's the change in speed is negligible. There are other ways that you can actually write this. The other ways that you can write it is to sort of put it into another variable here in the middle before you actually make the, before you multiply it by move speed, but this is probably an easier way to go about it, um, for beginners anyway. It's something usable, but eventually we'll be cleaning up the code and making sure that everything sort of sets out correctly. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you want the notes that I've got because I have some Game Maker notes, and if you also want extended videos and exclusive content, come check out my Patreon page. There you'll be able to check out exactly what's coming up in the next video, um, as well as you get other rewards as well if you want concept art, some um, access to web comics that I'm drawing at the moment. Then it's all there on my Patreon page. The link is below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next tutorial.